Hey Art Nerds, we are going to be discussing our second principle of art, and that is the principle of contrast. And when we talk about contrast in art, we are specifically talking about Okay. Hey Art Nerds, we are going to be talking about our second principle of art, and that is contrast. Now, when we talk about contrast in art, we are specifically talking about the arrangement of opposite art elements and effects. So when we're talking about our art elements, we're talking about line, shape, color, value, space, texture, and form. And when you have opposites of those elements, so for example, we have color here, cyan and orange, they're opposite each other on the color wheel, okay? So they have the greatest amount of contrast, okay? When we talk about values, we're talking about light versus dark. So that'd be white and black would be perfect opposites of each other. Or if we had textures, okay, we have soft or fuzzy versus smooth or bumpy, okay? So having those opposite art elements creates contrast, okay? If those elements are closer to each other, there's less contrast. So I'm gonna give you a nice visual example for you, okay? Can you read this? It's probably really easy, okay? The background is very dark, the text is very light, but notice as the text gets darker, it gets slightly more difficult to read, okay? And that's contrast at work. So this right here, has very low contrast, okay? There's not much of a difference between the color of the background and the color of the text, okay? But a great contrast, as in our first one with a white text with a dark background, that has the greatest amount of contrast among these options. All right, so for this example right here, we have contrast in which art element? Okay, hopefully you said line because that's what it is, okay? We have these nice straight lines and then we have these curved lines and it's the contrast between those two different types of lines, not the color because we still have black and white here, but it's the contrast between these two types of lines that makes us be able to see that shape, that circle in the center, okay? For this one, we have contrast in shape, Okay, so for example, okay, all the shapes are squares except for this one shape is a circle, okay? All of them are the same, but one is different. So we have contrasting types of shapes, okay? This one we have contrast in color. Notice how all the apples are green, but one of them is red, so there's a difference in color. Okay, it is not the greatest amount of contrast, but when you have red and green next to each other, even though they're not opposites on the color wheel, okay, they are very close, uh, I mean, very different, so that's why we have that contrast. Okay, this one, don't say color, okay, it's not a difference in color. Okay, notice how they're all the same shape as well. Okay, what we are seeing is we can see a bunch of circles. Some of them are like black, some of them are light gray, some of them are medium gray, some of them are white. So when we're talking about the lightness and darkness, we're talking about value. So this one has contrast and value. And that's why that one white circle sticks out so much in comparison. This one's a little bit tricky. Okay, this one's contrast in space. Okay, this one's a little bit harder to kind of understand. So what we have is we have our bird super, super close. Notice how it's in focus and very clear. Then we have everything else in the image, okay, that's blurry, okay? That's because it's far, far away, okay? So we have stuff that's far, far away and stuff that's super close to us. And the way that cameras work by having something in focus and everything else not in focus, it creates that contrast in space. So we can really tell the difference between what is far away and what is close up in this specific image. Then we have some contrast in texture, okay? So we have these smooth um, leaves, uh, kind of waxy leaves, and then we have these rocks, okay? Uh, some are smooth and they're a little bit bumpy, okay? Uh, but these, this contrast in texture, these great differences on how these objects feel. And then finally, we have contrast in form, okay? So it's not contrast in shape, because remember, form is something that's three-dimensional, has length, width, and height, such as this cube or this statue. And the reason that they're contrasting, it's not just because, oh, one's a person and one's a cube, okay? We're looking more at, look at how straight and angular the cube is versus the soft and flowy um, lines that you see um, when in the creation of the 
woman with the veil. They look very different in that regard. All right, so I have a couple artists I want to share with you. This guy right here, Caravaggio, is basically the king of contrast in painting. He created this image in 1606. Um, it has a man who looks like he's reading a book, a kind of older guy, and then there's a skull there, which often represents death. Okay. Notice that there's like a little, little halo over top of his head. Okay. It's because he's one of the saints um, in uh, the Christian faith. So they have some, you know, higher up kind of holy people in there or, um, and the reason why this is a great example for contrast, notice how black that background is. Okay. You can tell that there is a great amount of contrast because we have the dark, darks of the background and then we have the light lights of the figures okay it's not a contrasting color okay that's not what it is even if i change this to black and white okay you would still really see the contrast in between the background and everything else okay because there's such a bright light shining on the subject of this painting okay you have those really really bright highlights and when you have the light lights and the dark darks, you're really talking about value, okay? The lights and darks of things. So even though this has color in it, value is the element of art that we're really contrasting here, okay? Because if we wanted the opposite of red, the opposite of red is not black. The opposite of red is not white or brown, okay? So we're not talking about color here. It is the fact that we have the harsh lighting and the very dark background that makes everything stand out so well. Here we have a work by Maria Martinez. Uh, she created this is actually a ceramic pot, okay, uh, created in 1971. And Maria Martinez uh, is a fantastic ceramic artist. So she makes works of clay, specifically traditional black pottery, where um, she and her family, they actually go up in the mountains, they gather the rock, they crush the rock, they add water to it, and they make their own clay, and then they create their works of art. And they do a special... Uh, type of iron oxide, sort of like, it's like paint, okay? Uh, but it's a slip paint that they use. And that's how you have the shiny, and then you have the matte, and then you have the shiny and the matte. That's how you're able to see the designs because the entire pot is still black. The whole thing is black. It's just there's parts of it that's shiny and parts of it that are not, okay? Now, we know that it's not contrasting color, okay? Because the whole thing's black, okay? Um, harder to see it because when things are shiny in this image, see how they're a little bit lighter, they're almost white, okay? The object itself doesn't change color, it's the lighting on it, okay? So it's not contrasting color. It's not contrast in form, there's not contrast in shape. What it really is is a contrast, okay, in texture. Remember how I said some of it's super, super shiny, some of it's not, and that's what creates um, that contrast is you have some that's shiny and some that's flat. Some things that are shiny that's flat. Okay. And shiny is a, a great way of describing something that's really smooth or mirror like as a texture. Okay. So that's the contrast that we see there. And that's how we're able to see these designs without them having any fancy colors in there. Andy Warhol created this silk screen print in 1963. So silk screening, Oh, it's kind of kind of like painting, kind of like stamping. Okay, it's kind of a long process. Google it sometime. It's really cool, actually. But he created this work called Double Elvis in 1963. Andy Warhol's a pop art artist, so um, it's you know makes sense that Andy uh, Andy Warhol had Elvis because he used a lot of commercial goods, but also famous people in his works. Okay, so they're very iconic people. And Elvis was a very few famous musician at the time. And so he created this double Elvis. And the reason why we have contrast here, notice how one of them is in very vivid colors and the other one is just black and white. Okay, um, so we have this sort of this contrast between the two. Okay, and the diff only difference between these two okay, is the fact that one is color and what is not. So that's why we feel that this one is a really good fit for a contrast in color okay and i think i just have one more for you guys this is one of my favorite sculptures of all time okay i'm lying it is my favorite sculpture of all time it is called apollo and daphne it is a reference to uh greek and roman mythology we have apollo and he thinks Daphne's super hot, so he chases her around, and she's like help save me i don't think apollo's cool i don't like him so the gods change her into a tree okay 
crazy story. It happens. Okay. Be careful what you wish for. But we have this beautiful sculpture by Bernini in 1625. Okay. And this work of art is very, a very good example of contrast. Okay. It's the contrast in how he manipulates the marble that give us the illusion that we have these different um, parts of the sculpture. So whether it's skin or hair or leaves. Okay. Uh, and so we have a contrast basically in texture. We have the very, very smooth and sanded down marble that created the nice supple skin. And then we have the more uh, bumpy and rough texture that you have with the hair. And so you're able to really tell the difference and the separation between those different parts of the sculpture because of the contrast in texture. Even though it's all the same material, there is no color. Okay. The lighting doesn't really influence it that much. It's the fact that you have those different textures that really gives that contrast in there. Okay. And I have a couple of things I want to share with you. Now, these are Daphne's hands. Okay. Uh, this is a very close up image of her hand slowly changing into trees. Okay. So that's the uh, little twigs, little leaves. These leaves are almost, they're, they're very thin, almost paper thin and cut out of marble, marble stone. So you're like hammer and chiseling this out. So Bernini was basically showing off his amazing craftsmanship and having these very delicate leaves. Okay. If I tried this, I probably would have, you know, snapped a whole finger off, let alone just a leaf. Okay. Um, but amazing contrast in the texture and the formal qualities of this work to create that um, the definition between different parts of the of the work. Then you also, I just want to get you a good close up of the hair versus the skin. And you can really tell the difference. You have this beautiful carved line work in the hair. So if you actually touch it, it'd be really bumpy. Okay. And then you have this perfectly smooth skin that Apollo has here. Okay. So that contrast is extremely important. And then the last little detail I want to share with you is the contrast between, um, the base of this sculpture and Daphne's feet that are slowly growing roots and as she turns into a tree. So um, the contrast between everything in this sculpture gives us more clarity as to what is what. So contrast and texture is super important, especially if you're working with a single solid material. And the last thing I want to share with you guys, there's this really cool artist. Um, his name is John Beckley, and he does abstract paintings. And the thing that makes his paintings so vibrant and so um, so bright is the fact that he uses very contrasting colors. You have a black background with um, these really bright designs. And so the contrast is what makes it like really pop. So um, this video just goes through his process of creating this really cool work of art. So I would definitely check it out. I have the link in the description below. Otherwise, that's really all I have for you guys with the, the principle of contrast. Um, and I hope you guys uh, found this video very helpful and check out my other ones as we keep moving forward.